The key learnings from my arts formation project has been looking at how di differing aspects of mis- and disinformation manifest on TikTok and what are those visual aesthetics of different kinds of mis- and disinformation on TikTok. One of the things we noticed was what we call the TikTok gesture, where people gesture to documents around them. By analyzing these gestures and collaborating with an amazing non-binary dancer in the UK, Nev Harrison, we turned those gestures into a dance that we then filmed on top of different kinds of mis- and disinformation videos we found about Amber Heard relating to her trial. So for us, what was really, what was really interesting and, and important was seeing how new kinds of mis- and disinformation are being remixed and created inside of video platforms like TikTok. One of the more inspiring contributions to the project was actually what Nev Harrison, the dancer, sort of gave uh, to me. I'm not very comfortable in my body dancing. And Nev really encouraged me to try to enact the moves as well to help turn those into dance moves that we could use within the video. And I think for me that actually also ended up enhancing in a way the analysis I was doing because I ended up embodying and further embodying these gestures that we had been studying. I learned about arts formation really early on when uh, WAG from Amsterdam approached me to be their artist. I think all different kinds of pan-European, you know, pan-EU and non-EU funding, especially for the arts, is really important as so much of Europe, um, inside and outside of the EU, is a community, it is a collective. Um, I know all different artists across all different kinds of countries. So it, for me as an artist, it feels really great and it feels like an honor to be a part of such a transdisciplinary and transnational organization. My workshop session for the program was a bit different than my arts formation project, but a lot of the ethos of my art formation project is rooted in this workshop. So I have a practice called Feminist Data Set in which I use intersectional feminism as a framework to investigate all different kinds of technology, mainly machine learning. But I also use it as a framework to think about equitable data collection, data transparency, and data accountability. The workshop for today was on uh, feminist data governance and that spanned many different areas, including how data is presented, how data gets to stay online, who maintains it, in a way, I think that that is really related to what I was looking at with TikTok. Why is misogynistic misinformation uh, so popular and so prolific and so engaged with when, um, when feminist discourse is not? This is really a harm inside of TikTok. So thinking about, well, what are the data governance mechanisms in that platform and how do you insert equitability and feminism into that is deeply important. So Feminist Data Set is a community driven data set. And that means it's driven by community needs, by community wants and community desires. Often our data sets will be about a particular issue in a community. So in creating a data set about an issue, let's say it's about income inequality or a lack of free, um, a lack of free access relating to uh, healthcare, for example, those are feminist issues. And then the documentation, the creation of the data set becomes in a way an archive of protest, an archive of wants, an archives of urgency because it's driven by that need. So by creating with communities and ensuring that the community wants and urgencies are the focal point of the data set, it in a way becomes not only a representation of a problem, it becomes documentation of potential solutions as well. And so that's the way in which we see it acting as protest because it's illustrating the gaps, the wants, and what collective action can do.